It's that time of the month, am I right? <laughs> yep. Got my spooky period. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction corner. <laughs> oh, Rick. We had a lot of girls in your house growing up. Yep. While your girls were growing up, not while you were growing up. Yes. No girls in my house when I was growing up. I was an only child, but yes, I had girls. And your wife? And I had your girls growing up. Yes. Ever wreak havoc on the plumbing? Um, no, they were very resp they were very responsible. That's good. No. Don't flush your feminine products. Yeah, that's you really ought not <laughs> do that. But no, they're they very good about that. Yeah. Never had one instance. Yeah. Yeah. The same cycle though, I'm assuming. It's a it's a, it is a really wonderful, mysterious thing. It's one of the most astonishing things I've ever learned. And it's, I learned it as a like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. And I thought it was a joke. I thought people I were did playing too. a prank on I it. thought there's no way this is true. I was like, how does that even happen? That makes no sense. It is as do you know the do you know the thing about species of coral? They have a period or something? No, that certain species of coral bloom at the exact same time, no matter where they are in the world. Oh wow. And only those species will do it. And it'll be on the day. It's not exactly the same time every year, but when if you're in Papua New Guinea and that species of coral on October 1st at 11.10 a.m. starts to bloom, get on the phone anywhere in the world to a scientist watching that species, and it's blooming at the same time. Damn, that's so crazy. So it's similar mystery, the, the, yeah. the, the way case, their cycles For match. the men that are watching that don't know, because all the women already know. Yeah, the men, if you the have women know this. Uh, women that are um, in like a workspace together, at a home together. Just together a more lot. More than often than not. They will all be on the same cycle, meaning they're all going to have their periods at the same time just by being around each other for an extended it's a, period. It's, it's an amazing, it's one of the most beautiful mysterious mystery. things yeah, I've ever seen in a, my it's life. It's incredible. Uh, I've not actually seen it. I've just heard about it. But it happened. <laughs> it, I've heard it. Yeah, obviously, we've never experienced it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You're oh, let me see. No, no. Don't do that. <laughs> Today. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't ever, when a girl mentions that, don't say, let me prove it. Uh, today we got a Shah Rukh Khan interview. This is actually Shah Rukh Khan gave an interview in 2019 at the Critics' Choice Film Awards. Oh, which I did not know. I didn't know uh, that either. I don't follow the Critics' Choice Awards, but that's a big award. Yeah, uh, that's a big award. Not as big as like you know uh, Golden Globes, Oscars, or SAGs or anything. No, but it's like People's Choice. Actually, it's, it's well known. Actually, it's probably more. It's probably bigger than the SAG Awards. Actually, I take that back. Uh, SAG Awards yeah. is only for it's actors. only for actors. <laughs> uh, but this is a little speech he gave, I guess, at the 2019. Film Wars, which is why uh, after we started the channel, which is uh, a surprise I haven't seen. Interesting. That. Cool. Here we go. That is not Shah Rukh Khan. Absolutely. I, I would like to call on stage a man who needs absolutely no introduction. I've so why are you introducing him? On stage Just let him up. Let him on stage. Don't introduce him then. Sure. And every time I see him come up on stage, I'm like, nah, that introduction just ain't good enough. A critic's favorite and somebody who needs, once again, absolutely no introduction. Now you've done it Ladies twice. Gentlemen, get your hands together. Please welcome on stage, Shah Rukh Khan. Put your hands together. I was told it was in English, so I think this is just... Thank you very Thank you all the critics and all the friends, actually. Some of them became very bad as they grew older. Some of them are good, just like my films. I make awfully bad films and awfully good films. Thank you for having me this night. So what did I do? I'm flying China, so I'm a little bit affected. So I tried to write this speech. If you have patience, I'll take about three and a half minutes. I'll tell you quickly. So I wrote it like the critics are talking about it. Hold on. The scene opens at an opulent award function with the main protagonist. Anubama Chopra sitting in the first row, bejeweled and dressed in a best designer wear, looking resplendent in a many varied shades of white. Off white, <laughs> on white, off white. She's whispering demurely <clears throat> in the ears of my old friend and colleague Rajiv Masan. 
Now this version of Masand is a far cry from the younger moustached one. <laughs> whose complicated <coughs> vocabulary we all were so convinced by back in the days when I played anti-hero. <laughs> He's older now. A tad heavier, if I may add so. <laughs> and his moustache has disappeared completely. A critic his age, as he would talk about other actors, might do better considering roles more suited to himself. <laughs> rather than trying to manage fitting his new oversized fame into a single white sofa. I didn't know this was going to be a roast. Pontificating on the exactness of the actor's <laughs> angle as it closes on to Salman Khan yet again. <laughs> मेरे दोस्त हैं तो बुरा नहीं मानेंगे या मानेंगे भी तो क्या उखाड़ लेंगे मुझे थोड़ा अवार्ड देने वाले हैं <laughs> हम ऐसी hey, फिल्में करते ही नहीं जजिंग मास्टर शेफ सीजन थ्री और थ्री माइट फैच ए मोर कूडोज फ्रॉम ए स्लाइटली बोर्ड एंड जेडेड ऑडियंस अनुपमा वीन वाइल को टेक ऑन एनी बॉलीवुड साइर इफ यू टू गो जस्ट बाई द कशी टोन in which she addresses male superstars while interviewing them breaking into short shrill giggles <laughs> <laughs> which could easily find place in a three type horror movie actually <laughs> anyway as the scene progresses the pilot begins the plot begins to fall apart the award function turns into yet another six hour long meandering extravaganza of badly choreographed dance numbers no one wants to watch not to mention an unendless parade of has been critics for whom lifetime Unachievers awards have been. This <laughs> is a roast. It is. Cluster, unimaginative disappointment. You wouldn't want to recommend to your worst enemy. Yet here we are. I'm going with one and a half star. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about my five star sense of humor. Friends <laughs> and beloved critics, here we are at the. Critics Choice Academy. <laughs> I'm genuinely uh, very, very honoured that you have invited me here. And to sound relevant, I have written a speech. And the point is that the world is changing and is changing very, very fast. As we try to keep up with a new generation that is super connected through social media, aware of itself like no generation before it, and yet simultaneously fragile and impressionable, we also relate to art and the emotion and passion that drives it in new ways. For us artists, the challenge is to remain centred. in our creative expression while servicing short attention spans new psychological paradigms and faster more efficient communication networks the future will bring tremendous learning and change both technologically and at the level of the artistic relevance of our kitna cool bola na ye sab aayega na digital medium pe aise in mein se lines leke ye sab likhenge mere bare mein while we as artists are now at the mercy of an audience who now have so many options at the disposal in order to form an impression of a film's quality from unbelievably long and plot revealing trailers to tweets to opinions to blogs and what have you even seen to seen reviews from the theater as it goes on itself and hence the role of the critic would simply now break down to the basic truth and the basic truth is that the best film criticism is an art that can help to unfold the beauty of the film a well written heartfelt review can reveal new facets of a film to an audience and cause their thinking to depart on a new line of thought instead of it becoming a rush to get your review declared as only positive or negative coupled with the so called outreach culture on social media mm -hmm. we may end up reducing our powers of nuance and ambiguity and finesse as a society as critics just like movie stars i imagine that we will face one of the two possibilities that social media and its capacity to create egalitarian profile platforms for sharing views and opinions renders us both irrelevant ye for all the critics if they become irrelevant <clears throat> are the relevance of your views in our cinema actually increases as the reach of ideas expands due to the same platforms this of course would mean a new level of responsibility for both our sides we all know and accept it's easy to critique art but there really ought to be a deeper consciousness that drives the critique art forms often emanate from places that transcend analysis and critique the best artists were rarely recognized while alive precisely for the same reason it took the world to evolve before it recognized the likes of great masters such as picasso van gogh mozart 
The list is endless. Art, after all, cannot be Picasso is overrated. Deconstructed, explained, or be subject to the rigidity of logic. Have you ever read literary explanations of poetry of is Javed Sabia, for example? They reduce the rhythm and beauty of words to complicated pieces that remove all the joy from the loveliest of verses. <clears throat> so I request you all present here, the senior journalists and filmmakers, let's not reduce the reviewer's job to provide an advisory service, a shopping guide, or a flip card shopping cart option to the film girl. We need a full understanding of criticism, one that grants it more credit than a tweet or a user review. Film critics should be film lovers who have chosen <laughs> this path because they believe Please. in cinema as an art form. So I hope and pray that these awards here tonight truly recognize masters of the future tonight. And may these awards lead to their mastery being recognized and appreciated by larger and larger audience while they're present and working. I do also hope that these awards become more than just another opportunity for people like me who really don't do much as far as art and cinema is concerned, to preen on the red carpet, as handsome and as cool as I may look there. <laughs> I hope that they inspire all of us to reach beyond ideas of what is acceptable or viable art within a limited framework towards what is new, resplendent with the magic of imagination, and just plain brave. And more importantly, stars like me and filmmakers like me have to change myself as an actor and as a filmmaker. I have to promise myself to push the envelope as far as I can. It's what my love for art of acting demands of me and filmmaking demands of me. I would like to be a superhero, a midget, vertically challenged man, a fan with a prosthetic face, or the kind of lover most men are incapable of being. I'll be whichever lie reaches into the truest expression of my creativity. To become an actor, you need to deconstruct yourself. You need to discard the self. That's what the truth is when it comes to your art. We filmmakers have also far too long given more credibility to constructed and jaded ideas. We search for art, we search for form without searching the essence of our stories. We find logic in commerce and disregard the free spirit of storytelling. We have to remind ourselves that truth is formless, only untruths have form. We as film fraternity, have to be truer to ourselves and hence to the stories we set out to tell. So I request all my critics friends here, please don't be like us Bollywood film stars and get carried away by what Bollywood succumbed to many years ago, the star system. The star system cannot be the only way of summing up films by a critic. Three stars, three and a half stars, three and a quarter stars, five stars. It's a film, it's not a hotel for God's sake. With the advent of homegrown critics sprouting all over, film critique is becoming an end, end, endangered species. Please let it not perish to be replaced by a consumer service that has no brains and all thumbs. Meanwhile, as actors and filmmakers, I will try not to keep spreading my arms and flash my dimples at every given opportunity. <laughs> so I wish the whole film fraternity that is gathered here tonight, all the critics, all the journalists, Raja Sen, who I really love, because when I film is the biggest disaster, he's the only guy who likes it. <laughs> Bhavna Somaya ji, agar aapka josh, jalwa, if she's here, I love the alliteration she uses all the time. Jalwa, josh, jazba, jazbat. <clears throat> but I wish the whole fraternity here, with all my love and goodness, as a filmmaker, as a star that you've made me, the best of luck with these awards. May these awards encourage better filmmaking and may the critics here find enough films to like and encourage that better filmmaking. And now, I will quickly perform Chaya Chaya. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you everyone for being here. And have a great, great night. And congratulations to all the winners and all the filmmakers who are present here. Thank you very much. I actually wish he would have performed. <laughs> uh, I love his wit. His wit is wonderful, but it was also, I, I really enjoyed the speech. What did you think about it? Yeah, he. I've said this before. I'll probably say it every time I ever hear the man talk. There are certain things that are always the same about Shah Rukh Khan. One, his intelligence. Very intelligent. 
to his mastery of the English language. Mm -hmm. And then three, he is the strangest duck I've ever encountered in the world of cinema. That's because he's a person. Not a his, person. his, I so, not only do I want to talk to him here and ask him questions so the stupid family could, could, could hear that conversation and the things that we would ask him about artistry and film, mm. especially some of the things he said in there. I, I, there's so many things I would just like to ask him privately because I don't think he would feel comfortable giving full-throated answers about those things publicly. And really, his is a mind that perceives the art form and says certain things that I've just never heard anybody else say. And it, it, he just it always, he just always fascinates me in the same way that Stella Adler fascinates me, mm -hmm. but I don't subscribe to a lot of what Stella Adler says, but I will tell people, you got to read Stella Adler, and then I'll say, you know, but you need to be aware of the fact that she may say some things that you're going to read and go, what? Because it's going to be unlike anything you've ever heard from anybody else in acting. He says stuff I've, I've just, I've never heard anybody else say. Well, that's one, it obviously being in Indian cinema, Bollywood cinema, to be specific, is such a different beast, but also nobody else on the planet is outside of maybe the other two cons are in the situation he is in. Mm -hmm. um, Avatar Bakshan, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe Rajnikanth, uh, in terms of the level of stardom you have and what the mammoth of the industries require yeah. as well. But it's, he's... One of the things I'd love to talk to him about is even in this speech, he seems to be a, he seems to have contradictions because at this one time he will talk about, you know, don't do what we do and be focused on a star system more than you are artistry. And then he says at the end, and now I'm going to do Chaya Chaya for you. <laughs> And he will say, I'm an artist and the art form means more to me and critics should review things not based on the ratings of the film and for box office, but then he'll make films that are just for box office. It's, it, it's, it's, he's just the most interesting, complex, with an approach to the art form of the industry unlike anybody I've ever heard. I think it's just because he understands the industry. Um... And so I don't know if there's as much contradictions as opposed to just obviously he, he, he is an artist and all that, but he also understands who he is as a star. And those are two different things. And he can wear the two different hats. And I just think he's a very sarcastic person. And so, <laughs> oh, I think he's definitely a sarcastic uh, person. Which I love. And I also favorite. think he does things. I for, there's there's I saw an interview someone was asking. I think it was Karan Johar. I saw it was a real quick clip on a reel of Karan Johar asking Priyanka why she went to Hollywood. Um, and he gave the he gave an example of an SRK quote when SRK quote when he was asked why he didn't go to Hollywood he said he was comfortable in in Bollywood and her response was I'm not looking to be comfortable I'm looking to be challenged mm. and I think there is a certain level of comfort he has but again those are questions I'd love to ask him because on the one hand he will do for example like a My Name Is Khan and he'll talk about things in such an eloquent artist centric mindset and then the next thing he will say is definitively supportive of the star system that he just a few seconds ago said, don't make the mistake of following a star system. It's very strange and, and, and intriguing to me. I just, I'm always interested in what he has to say. Yeah, he's always a, interested. He's a great speaker. Uh, and, you know, he's always uh, wonderful to listen to. Yeah, so intelligent. Uh, let us know what other interviews by the man, the myth, and the legend, <laughs> the legend. Shah Rukh Khan, yeah. that we should watch and which should be his next film that we should watch of his. Let us know down below. Juice!